All right, today, the 28th of May, makes it exactly 40 years that 15 West African states signed the Treaty of Lagos that was in 1975, creating the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS. Now, from an era when military governments dominated West Africa to the contemporary age when democracy holds sway throughout the region, ECOWAS has in 40 years experienced quite an evolution. Now, Nnam Diodikbo has the highlights in this background report. In 1964, the idea for a sub-regional body was sown. At that time, the likes of President Williams Tubman of Liberia felt a regional organization would promote brotherliness and trade in the region. The agitations became more intense in the late 60s and by 1972, the dual of General Yakubu Gowon of Nigeria and General Nasingbe Eyedema of Togo began to rally support why conversing to approval from almost 12 states in West Africa. The momentum swelled between 73 and 74 and climbed in 1975 when 15 countries signed the treaty in Lagos for an economic community of West African states, ECOWAS. From its inception, ECOWAS sought to achieve collective self-sufficiency for member states by means of economic and monetary union, creating a single large trading block. This means trading in agricultural produce and exchange of manufactured products. The founding fathers realized that the domestic markets of the individual member states were not big enough to compete in the world market, including large trade blocks like the European communities at the time. Article 3 of the Lagos Treaty clearly implies the goals of ECOWAS in boosting regional trade, stating that the community will promote cooperation and integration, leading to the establishment of an economic union to raise the living standards of its people. That section of the treaty also refers to the goal of maintaining and enhancing economic stability, foster relations amongst member states and contribute to the progress and development of the African continent. The imperatives for defense was also not lost on the leaders. Between 1978 and 1981, ECOWAS leaders adopted two important defense protocols which called for mutual respect and non-interference in the internal affairs of a member state. The protocols also advocated the establishment of a regional mechanism for mutual assistance in defense matters. These provisions have facilitated regional conflict resolution efforts initiated by ECOWAS. It is further boosted by a July 1991 agreement by member states to a declaration of political principles committing them to uphold democracy and the rule of law. But then four decades down the line and ECOWAS leaders are confronted with new realities. Insecurity and terrorism, political instability, Piracy as well as galloping youth unemployment are some issues which confront West Africa today. Though much has been achieved in terms of policies to address subsisting contemporary challenges, a lot more also needs to be addressed. ECOWAS fails the gains made in the last 40 years supersedes the challenges. 40 years gone, what does the future hold for West Africa? Is the vision of an ECOWAS of people realistic and achievable? Only time will tell. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you very much, there, uh, correspondent uh, Namdi Odupo. Uh, Forty years ago, 1975, you know, we can still uh, recall uh, some of uh, the heads of state uh, who were in West Africa at the time. General Gawan, of course, was in charge of Nigeria. Matthew Kereku mm -hmm. was in Benin Republic. Ignatius Achampong mm -hmm. uh, was in Ghana. Siaka Stevens was in Syria alone. Hufi Boye mm -hmm. uh, was in Cote d'Ivoire. A number of them, of course, are not uh, available now. William Talbot, of course, he was assassinated in a coup in 1980. Uh, but before then, of course, they all participated in the launch mm -hmm. of uh, ECOWAS <coughs> in 1975. But of course, joining us now uh, to uh, discuss the, uh, the legacy and the milestones of ECOWAS this morning, I uh, would like to welcome Ambassador Kadre Desiree Wedrago, who is the president of the ECOWAS Commission. Ambassador, welcome to Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you. 
Oh, okay, just uh, as part of the background, uh, there was a ceremony that uh, took place uh, a couple of days ago at yes. uh, Nigeria's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. You were present on that occasion. Mm -hmm. It was a commemorative uh, session for the ECOWAS at, uh, at 40, and uh, Nigeria's former head of state, General Yakubu Gowan, did say that life uh, begins at 40. And mm -hmm. my colleague Claire, uh, while we were introducing the program this morning, of course, uh, remarked on uh, the uh, press on the uh, uh, statement by General uh, Yakubu Gowan. 40 years on. Yes, uh, ECOWAS citizens hear about ECOWAS, they hear of ECOWAS, mm -hmm. uh, but do they feel ECOWAS? Mm -hmm. How has ECOWAS impacted mm -hmm. uh, on the people uh, mm -hmm. of the sub-region? Mm -hmm. So thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to address my fellow citizens of uh, ECOWAS uh, on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of our uh, economic uh, grouping. But uh, let me start by paying tribute to our founding fathers, and uh, especially General Yakubu Goon and the late President Eyadema, who took the initiative of gathering all the 16 member states of the region into a regional economic community. I want also to pay tribute to our leaders past and present, and also extend my warmest congratulations to all the West African citizens, governments, private sector, civil society, law enforcement agencies, and of course, the staff of the ECOWAS institutions. I think we have gone a long way in uniting West Africa. And to answer to the question you have just asked, I believe that uh, ECOWAS has had an impact on the life of West Africans. First of all, you may realize that the, one of the first protocol of ECOWAS is to ensure free movement of persons within our region. And we must realize that this is a reality. You can travel throughout West Africa without requiring any visa. I think we are the only region in, in, in Africa having performed that. And we have gone beyond that. We have established the right of residence. That is, you can reside wherever you want without requiring any authorization. And then we have gone also far beyond to adopt the right of establishment, which means that you can reside wherever you want, but what you can work and you can create your company wherever you want be, without being discriminated vis-a-vis uh, -vis the nationals of this country. So I think this is a fundamental uh, achievement of ECOWAS that has changed the lives of West Africans. A part of that, you must realize that uh, uh, we have improved a lot in the matters of maintaining peace and security and stability in our region, but also in creating a, an enabling environment that can foster economic development. So maybe we can come later on on, on, on this sectoral uh, process, but I want just to, 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 to congratulate West Africa for the achievement for ECOWAS at 40. I think we have gone a long way. All right, uh, Mr. President, uh, again, let me also join in congratulating uh, ECOWAS at 40. Mm -hmm. And um, ECOWAS is certainly one of the regional blocks to be you know, uh, uh, reckoned with mm -hmm. on the, uh, internationally, of course, mm -hmm. al alongside other uh, regional uh, mm -hmm. blocks in, in the world. But let's take, like you said, let's take uh, the principles on which mm -hmm. uh, ECOWAS is hinged. Mm -hmm. For instance, the protocol on free movement of a person's uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, establishment and, of course, residence, mm -hmm. that is always celebrated. We've celebrated, yeah. everybody is talking about yeah. it. But the common experience, uh, Mr. President, is that mm. it, that is hardly free. Movement of persons mm. and goods mm. is hardly free. Mm -hmm. Travelers have to contend usually with distortions, roadblocks, you find all sorts of obstacles you know, along the way. Mm. Why is that persisting? That's one. And secondly, ECOWAS mm -hmm. is contemplating, a, uh, 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 of course, working on the biometric identity card. Yes. Will that be respected, given mm -hmm. our experience mm -hmm. with the protocol on free movement? So I think you are right in, uh, in saying that uh, we still need to improve uh, on the implementation of our protocols mm -hmm. relating to free movement of persons and goods. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, uh, made this notice and we brought this dossier to the head of state and government to their summit here in Abuja in 2013 where we told them, look, we have all the necessary protocols now 
in order to uh, have free movement of persons and goods. But we realize that there are still some constraints. There are harassment, there are obstacles to the movement of persons actually. When you cross the border, when you are uh, you're driving your car, you s may meet some obstacles. So we say, okay, let's see how we are going to remove these obstacles and make these protocols reality. So the head of state endorsed our proposal and we organized last year in July 2014 a regional citizen forum in Ouagadougou. That was the first citizen forum we organized on the free movement of persons and goods. All sectors, all the stakeholders of free movement of persons were there. We analyzed the situation. We noticed that everything is not perfect and we designed a new roadmap that can allow us to remove the last obstacles to free movement of persons and goods in West Africa. And we are now, right now, implementing this roadmap in order to facilitate the movement of persons and goods and remove the last obstacles. One example, for instance, is the concept of building joint border posts between neighboring countries to facilitate the formalities. Instead of uh, uh, making formality to exit a country and then uh, a few meters later stop again to have formality to enter the next country, all the formality will be grouped in one building and then it will facilitate. We have inaugurated such joint border posts between Togo and Ghana, between Niger and, uh, and Benin, between Nigeria and, and, and Cameroon, and we are now building one between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire and one between Mali and Burkina Faso and Burkina Faso and Ghana. So we are trying to extend this uh, program so as to facilitate the movement.